Hey everyone, it's Forrest or Dave here. Welcome back once again to another video on my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newest version of OBS and I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial, an updated tutorial that is, on the best way that you can record high quality 1080p 60 frames per second videos for your YouTube channel of your games, whether you're wanting to do kind of gameplays, funny moments, montages, anything, this is going to work for all of you guys. So, Go to the website for OBS, just type into Google, you'll find it, you know, I shouldn't have to leave a link in the description for this kind of thing, you should just be able to find it on your own, honestly. Um, download OBS Studio, uh, which is what OBS multi-platform uh, is now, so it used to be called OBS multi-platform, that's what I did a tutorial on before. Now it's called OBS Studio, it's the same thing though, it just has a much kind of nicer name. Um, and then make sure you run the 64-bit version, um, so when you download it from the website, it will have, it will actually install two uh, programs, it will install the 64-bit and the 32-bit. Make sure you're running the 64-bit, assuming that you have a 64-bit system, which I'm pretty sure everyone does now. Um, if you don't have a 64-bit system, then I'm surprised you're even playing games, never mind recording. Okay, so we are on this screen, let's head to the settings. So in here, first two tabs really don't matter, we're not streaming so this doesn't matter, and the general stuff is just leave it as is unless you want to change the theme or the language. I'm English and I like this default theme, so I'm going to leave it as is. Head to the output and switch the output mode to advanced. And in the streaming tab, doesn't matter, we're not streaming, so this will never be used for me. Head to recording. Type, keep it on standard, recording path. We want to set this to a fairly fast hard drive, so... Um, many people might just have a singular hard drive, like a single terabyte hard drive, which... I think it's nuts. I couldn't. I could never have all my games as well as my recordings on one hard drive. It's much more efficient to have a separate hard drive for recordings, and that's what this uh, this D drive is. Sorry, I just kind of choked on my own. Oh, I've got a little slightly bad throat at the moment. So uh, uh, talking a lot isn't actually the best idea, but I need to explain to you guys how to do this. So let's carry on. Yes. Yeah, so this D drive is. Uh, a fairly fast hard drive, it's not a solid state drive. If you have a solid state, state drive, you have the money to get a fairly big solid state drive to record to. Bob's your uncle, you're going to have an absolutely brilliant time and you're going to have no problems. But um, for the file sizes I get for um, my videos, this uh, hard drive that I have, it's I think 7,200 um, RPM is the right is the speed. Um, it works, it works for me. Uh, otherwise, you end up with these really juttery videos because the uh, the software can't write quick enough to the hard drive, so you just end up dropping loads of frames. Um, so yeah, have a, have a decent hard drive. Recording format is slightly kind of preferential, depending on what you're going to be doing with the, with the, the stuff. With the stuff, with the videos. That's probably how I should describe it. Uh, FLV, I would say don't ever go with, because you don't get the advantage of the audio tracks. You can see here, warning certain formats, such as FLV, do not support multiple tra tracks per recording. I'm pretty sure all the other ones do. I'm not sure about M3, U8, but I'm pretty sure these four in the middle do. I go with MOV or MP4, depending on kind of what's working for me at the time. Uh, my computer has always had this slight weird thing where something will work perfectly and then for ages and then it will suddenly not work and I have to change it and then it will kind of go back so at the moment MOV works for putting my files into Adobe Premiere um, MP4 works well as well so I'd say MP4 or MOV just uh, try them out see what works best for you audio tracks I have three audio tracks in um, for my videos I have my mic I have my desktop audio by my games and then I have my discord slash skype audio. Um, if you want a little tutorial on how to split your kind of your voice chat audio with like with your friends and stuff in Discord from your game audio, um, I'd say go check out um, Jack Frag's video on uh, his like, it's using DX Tori, it's not using the same bit of software, but there's a bit in it where he talks about voice meter input. So just search on uh, YouTube for, um, it's like Jack Frag's recording tutorial and you should find it there because that's how I learned how to do it and he explains it far better than I'm going to explain it at the moment. Encoder, this is where things change, uh, where they differ from last time. So I was using X264 last time. X264 is a CPU based encoder, it completely uses your CPU um, and if you're recording uh, like what I was recording before I think it was 720p 60fps, that was working fine, you know, I I could happily record, it didn't um, put too much load on my CPU and it didn't affect my games. However, now that I'm trying to record at 1080p, uh, bumping up that uh, resolution quite a lot, 
uh, I can't really handle the x264 encoding. Um, my CPU is an i5-3570K, um, slightly overclocked, and still, um, it doesn't keep the frames as consistent as like as like them. It's not like I turn it on and then the frames go to shit and I can't play or anything like that. It just isn't as smooth as I'd like. I like to have as little impact as possible while getting good quality. And for that, I recommend NVENC encoder. So this is the same encoder that um, NVIDIA Shadowplay uses. So you'll always hear people banging on about Shadowplay and how it's so good because you don't use any frames and stuff. I will say that the NVENC encoder within OBS Studio is not as efficient as Shadowplay. Like Shadowplay does like barely drops frames. We might drop like one or two. I'd say I've I've dra dropped a maximum of like 10 frames when I've been running at like 150 plus FPS and stuff. So it's not really noticeable until you get in some really maybe like densely populated areas on like an on like a really big online game and stuff. It's mostly it mostly has very like zero impact um noticeable if you're not if you're unless you're looking at the FPS counter. So run with the N V and C encoder. This is gonna work out really well for you. If you have AMD, um an AMD GPU, there should be something similar here and then you should have similar controls. If they're not similar, go check out another another tutorial of like a tutorial I can't explain AMD to you. So but I think a lot of people have NVIDIA's these days anyway. These two settings here, I'd just say leave and like even if you're gonna rescale to um 1280 by 720, I wouldn't do it here. I'd do it later on in the video tab. Here are the main settings. So this is how it's set up in shadow play if you're recording highest quality. So the rate control is going to be CBR. This is constant bit rates. This means at every single point during the video, we're going to have 50,000 bits um, applied to the... So bits are kind of like... So a lower bit rate means lower quality. It becomes much more grainy. I find that F50,000 will give you the highest quality that um, is kind of noticeable for, for, um, for me at least. Uh, you could bump this up even more. Um, I've actually gone up to 60,000 sometimes for certain games if they're really fast paced. But most of the time, 50,000 does the job, and that's what Shadowplay uses for its highest saying anyway. Keyframe interval, keep that on zero. Don't ask why, just just do. It's auto, it just leaves this auto, it works well. Preset I like to leave on default here, and this is kind of to do with the quality and um, kind of how fast your graphics card has to run and stuff, and the load and. I just find default works best. I'm pretty sure default is what Shadowplay uses, like just the default NVIDIA encoder kind of setting. You can try high quality or Blu-ray to get even increased quality. You could try high performance to reduce the load on uh, your on your computer, but default works best for me. This is kind of personal preference, so just try them out, see what works best for you. Profile, put this on high, because high is what we want for high definition video. Main is for standard definition, and then I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what high 44p is, and so I'm pretty sure that's something to do with colors and stuff, but I just leave it on high. Level, leave this on auto. Two-pass encoding I do not use at the moment. I might try it out um, at some point, but I just don't understand how two-pass encoding works when you're recording rather than like rendering something out of, a, out of some software. I just think it's a bit weird. And then GPU. I leave this on zero. This essentially says to the software which GPU GPU you're using. I only have one GPU, so I just set it to zero. So the, like GPU number one will be zero, GPU number two will be one, GPU number three will be two, and etc. And if you have like four GPUs in your soft in your computer, which I don't even know if that's possible. I'm just making that up. I think. But anyway, we're just setting that to zero because we only have one. Audio. I put these all on 320 bit rate. Some people will say to you, oh, YouTube only takes 192 and stuff. I'm pretty sure it actually does, but I just like to crank this up at the moment. Just give it as much quality as possible in my audio. In some cases, I find that having better, having good audio quality um, is better than having the good video quality. You know, you could have a slightly bad video quality, but some really nice sound with it, and it will still be decent enough to watch. So I leave it as that. Uh, audio, I don't have really much to have much to say here. This is kind of uh, based on what I was talking about earlier. So uh, I've got my mic here as my f as my primary mic device, my produced USB microphone, and then these two are essentially the two channels using voice meter. Um, so the first one is the uh, the game audio, and then this is the Discord audio. So, but as I said, I'm not explaining this. Go watch the Jack Frag video if you want to know that sample rate. Um, I've put to 48 kilohertz. You need to have this set uh, universally amongst all your devices. So when you go into the window settings down here, into your like recording and playback devices, uh, you need to have it all set to the same 
that's what matters. Otherwise, you can have these desync problems. So I have everything set to 48 kilohertz, and then when I drag it into Premiere Pro, I have that as 48 as well. Channels put on stereo. Um, I've never actually tried mono. I know that stereo is kind of two channel. Mono is one channel. I just think stereo would be better. Maybe I'm mistaken. Someone who knows a bit more about audio can explain that a bit better than me, probably. Let's head into video next. So the base canvas resolution is 1920 by 1080. So this is basically the size of your monitor, um, which is all already detected as 1920 by 1080, which is great. And then the output scaled resolution is what you're actually recording as. So if I wanted to downscale this to 90 um, to 12 by 720, 720p, I could do that. However, I'm not downscaling. I'm going to leave it as 1920 by 1080. The next thing is the downscale filter. So when you downscale, um, you kind of have one of these filters to kind of how good the downscaling is. This doesn't matter for me because I have it not scaled. However, I found that um, Bicubic actually works best for me. And uh, the background just changed on my computer, which was quite interesting, wasn't it? I didn't realize that Windows 10 did that. Uh, yeah, interesting. I just changed my computer background to a couple of backgrounds. So I didn't realize it was going to switch between the two. Awesome. Uh, FPS values, I'd have this on common FPS values, and then you can set this to 30 or 60 are the main ones we'd like to set it to. 60 is what I run uh, to get the best quality. Hotkeys, you can set up a hotkey here to kind of start and stop. I don't use one I because I literally click start and then go and then it works. That's what works best for me. But you can set up some hotkeys here, um, which could be quite interesting. And then advanced, this is some stuff which I didn't recover last time, but I think it's actually quite important. Process priority, um, I'd leave this on normal. Um, you can. Br I, I, don't, I don't like the idea of putting the process of recording on high because I just feel like that's not going to help your game in any way because your game's going to have less um, like CPU and RAM available to it. So I'd leave that alone. Video, the renderer, uh, I leave on Direct 3D 11. You can try Umgel. I don't think it makes too much difference. I think it kind of depends on the games you're playing. Um, but at the moment, I've had no problems with using Direct 3D 11, so I'd just say leave it on that or just leave it on whatever it is when it started video adapter is actually blanked out for me um so yep i'm gonna leave that blank color format i leave on nv12 this is actually the lowest quality color format but for the recordings i do it works out fine it gives me nice enough colors so i leave it as is yuv color space i think mine was on 601 when i started but i've bumped this up to 709 and then the color range i actually leave on partial um, when I bump up the color range, you can go and look on Wikipedia or something else to explain, to get someone to explain to you what all the colors and stuff mean, what is 709, what is 601. I find that leaving the color range on partial gives me much nicer to look at colors. Then maybe not as vibrant, but I find that the full color range crushes the blacks way too much and makes it kind of uncomfortable to look at. So leaving it on partial is what works best for me. So that's all the settings. Uh, and if we head back into here now, the, all I really have to say is if we were to have a scene here, you can see I've got a scene and we can add, make new scenes like, like this. You can make a scene, you can then right click on the sources, add, you can add a bunch of different things. Um, what I would usually add would be a game capture, you click OK and then I unclick the capture any full screen application window here and then I have all of my things here which I can click. And then you can basically choose the window and then it would come up here. And then you just press start recording. And that's literally it. That is uh, the settings I use currently for OBS to get kind of shadow play uh, style quality and style encoding. It works out really well for me and allows me to get this multi-track audio, high quality gameplay footage for all my videos. Hopefully this has been informative to you. And if you would like any more tutorials on any kind of bits of software, maybe like another Premiere Pro style a tutorial or something like that. And for editing, I've been doing, uh, I've been kind of getting a little bit more into my editing. Uh, then leave a comment below. That would be really awesome to hear from you guys. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.